What's going on guys, your boy Amazing, we're back with another video, and in today's video guys, me going over the 7 Disasters special ticket, and going over which character you should be picking from the ticket, and uh, all the info with that guy. So, before we actually hop into the video, though, make sure to subscribe to your boy Amazing, we are on the road to the 50,000 subscribers. If you guys haven't hit that sub button already, man, what are you guys doing? Definitely make sure to end with that out of the way, guys. We're going to be going over uh, which characters you want to be picking from this ticket right here. So for you guys wondering, this ticket, and you're going to be able to get two of these tickets in the actual event itself. Um, there's one in the special missions that I just actually did clear for. And then there's also going to be one in the hideout rev uh, renovation at the very end as well. So you're going to be able to get two of these special selection tickets. Alright guys, now in terms of the characters that you're going to be able to pick from these tickets, let's actually go to the ticket selector here, and I'll show you guys which character we're actually going to be, uh, you know, picking at the very end, but also we'll be discussing each of the characters and what they're, uh, you know, actually good in. So we have, what is it, 14 characters here, we have the green Lilia, the blue Lilia, the green Valenti, the red Easton, red Mono, red Roxy, we do also have green Shin, red Camilla, red Lilia, a uh, red Awakened Lilia, the blue uh, regular Mono, and then green awakened Valenti. We got the red regular Easton. And then we do got the green uh, regular mono. And then the awakened Easton, the red one. So in terms of this lineup here, guys, let's go over each of the characters and we'll talk about it. So starting with the green Lilia here. Green Lilia is not like a super insane character anymore. Um, you know, she originally released as a free-to-play character back in the day. Um, I think Global only got one copy of her, but JP actually did get 6-6 of this character back in the day. But um, honestly, nowadays, this character is not really that great. Um, um, all she's really providing for you is going to be decreasing all uh, enemies attack by 16% in PvP. And honestly, you know, as a backline, it's not really going to be as good running this character versus other characters in the game. And even if you were to argue like Chaos Battle and stuff like that, usually tank teams in Chaos Battle aren't the greatest. And I usually, you know, recommend people to go with like damage variants. And because she's kind of just only providing this from the backline, it's not like a super insane uh, bonus. So yeah, Green Lily, I feel like is going to be a fairly easy skip for a lot of you guys. All right, guys, now talking about the blue mage lilia this lilia actually is a little bit better than the other one in my opinion now the reason why she actually is good is because she was able to increase pierce rate of allies other than this hero by the value of 50 percent of the hero's pierce rate at the start of the battle so what lilia would do is she would actually give pierce rate to allies and if you were running characters that had pierce cards on, uh, in their skills so you know back in the day when people were running like blue demon meliotis and even when trader meli was uh released as well people ran lilia with trader meli right um you know if you have a character that does have a pierce card she's gonna to definitely benefit that character a lot but nowadays in terms of the meta guys you're never gonna see a character like lilia being used really um you know she does have a cleanse card as well on the rank two and, and, and that's pretty good as uh right there she does also have uh, aoe gauge reduction on the rank two and rank three um which is also a nice skill but overall like you know this character is not going to be like a staple must pick up character at least right now you know maybe in the future when she does get an lr and she is a lot better than than for sure but right now at, at this moment in the game guys i cannot recommend this character anymore all right guys moving on to the weapon researcher valenti now this valenti is actually a really really good case in terms of a character you might want to get and the reason why this is the case guys if we look at the passive hero this valenti decreases all enemies pierce rate by the value of the hero's resistance at the start of the battle so pretty much this valenti was made to counter that blue lilia we just talked about and the thing is with valenti is that this works in you know a lot of pve content in the game that you might not think it would be actually usable in and you know one thing that this valenti is able to do a lot side characters like chad king you know when you are lowering the enemy's pierce ray based on her resistance and you have a really like you know really strong damage reduction shield you know in a character like chad king or you know uh if you just have a team with like you know the blue ragnarok bond uh or the blue uh you know skinny bond right the regular one um then that's gonna work really well because he's gonna you know lower the enemy's attack related and then they're gonna start patiencing you and they can't do any damage yeah valenti definitely has her use because of that passive right there like your skills aren't that great um she does have an attack related lower one on her rank two and then a defense related single target lower so in terms of her actual skills not really useful but the passive itself is strong and for people that were trying to clear like floor one nidhog you know she was a really good character floor one school and hottie very very good character um yeah i mean pretty much all demonic beast battles you could do floor one with this character other than ratatoster you could use this character on pretty much all of them and uh yeah i mean she's just a very good you know kind of you know gimmicky character in the sense that you're able to you you know just pretty much make it so the enemy does no damage to you uh, depending on the team comp guys so um one of the characters i would recommend uh i wouldn't say she's the the best pickup from this yet um 
we'll have to go through the rest of the characters but she's definitely going to be on our minds guys in terms of a character we want to definitely be thinking about all right moving on guys we do have the next character being the blue noblesse east and now this character in terms of what she's going to provide for you is going to be this buff card right here um the less said card so increase the attack related stats of allies by 15 percent for two turns it's going to be 15 20 and 30 so you know if you're looking for a blue attack related stat buffer then this easton's going to be a great pickup just for that now everything else in her kit is not really that great i mean if you look at her passive it increases only her own basic stats for each battlefield buff which is not that great we only get uh 25 basic stats and it's just for herself so it's not that insane and then uh, her attack card right here is just an aoe gauge reduction so not even a very strong you know kit right there in terms of uh the character itself i think the main benefit from this character guys would be just the attack related buff so if you're looking for a buffer in like a you know red demon let's say which you know nowadays i don't even think we even need this anymore uh but if you're looking for a buffer though or if you're missing this character you know definitely not a bad character at all just to get for the buff card alone Alrighty, guys hopping into the next character here we got the red human weapon mono now i'm gonna make a case for this character actually guys you might think that this mono is not that great right now but there is two things about this character that is really nice for the latest demonic beast battle being the rata tosker now i already made a video showcasing this mono alongside green hendrickson and this character is able to do floor one and possibly a floor two clear i haven't actually done a floor two clear with this character but she definitely could do it in theory because of what her skills are providing now one of her skills here is going to be poison single target and remember it is ranged as well which is pretty good and then her second uh skill is going to be bleed on the ultimate which means it could be either range or melee because it's an ultimate it doesn't act as ranger melee so you know being able to use mono on the new ratatosker demonic beast battle if you do not own this character and you're thinking okay maybe i want to start doing floor one of ratatosker you know maybe mono is not a bad pickup guys just because of that alone um she also does increase the damage right so increase the hero's damage dealt by 50 percent per bleeding poisoned and a shock debuff when attacking enemies with said debuffs so you know she's going to be dealing a lot more damage on those uh debuffed enemies which is also not bad either because that means you're going to be killing the stumps faster or you're going to be killing the boss faster so definitely you know if you're thinking about ratatosker with this character might be a reason why you want to get her all right guys moving on we got red roxy here i think red roxy is a fairly easy skip here guys nothing from this character is really out of the out of the blue here um she honestly doesn't have anything i would say is like that crazy um but i'm in a circumstance on my main account by the way where i'm actually missing dupes on this character still so for me i'll probably be picking this character but for a lot of you guys i think this roxy is a complete skip and i don't even have anything really to say about this character in terms of you know what she's really doing i mean um I, you know if you inflict explosion damage on the enemy you heal here the hero's hp like it's not that crazy right i, I don't think this character is going to be really used too much so i think this character is a, a easy skip on this ticket moving on guys we do got the gamer shin the green one this gamer shin is really good for farming stuff if you're looking to get a character for farming gold farming free stage farming anything like that this character is going to be really good because he has a debuff uh aoe attack right here volley of uh, fire which you're going to decrease uh ultimate move damage on the enemy on all ranks and the damage on the actual skill does not change so regardless if you're getting merges or not it's always going to be dealing that damage and then on the first skill here he has weak points so that's going to combo really well you know alongside the volley fire skill right so that is a really good combination you can do and so i do think that you know shin is a really good farming unit because of that now another thing that shin's able to do as well guys is that he actually does rank up the allies after he uses three skills so right here when there are three or more of this at uh, attacks of this effect they are removed and increase ally skill rank so he does gain attack related stats every time he uses a skill and then after it hits three times he's going to remove the attack related but the allies get a rank up so it's going to act kind of like a guilt the rank up but it's by you attacking you're able to get it so shin definitely has that use and i think for farming if you're looking for a really good farming character definitely take this character i think he's going to be pretty nice all right guys moving on we got the red camilla now red camilla i'm coming i'm gonna be honest guys i don't think this character is that great she does not really have anything that's really going on um she can transform in her ultimate into the a uh, transform version i can actually see the uh, transform kit of this character it doesn't show it um but this camilla is just not really that insane man um i don't think she's doing really anything too much she's kind of like red roxy where i see her as like a character that's just an easy skip because she's not doing anything that's like out of the ordinary you know nothing special about this character really um so yeah you know unfortunately this camilla is going to be a skip even though i do really like the design of the character and all that um she's just not really that strong of a character so i'm gonna uh you know tell you guys that she is a pass all right guys moving on to the red away 
Awakened Lilia. This is the first Awakened character they released for the Catastrophe characters. Now, in terms of Awakened Lilia, though, what is she really doing for the team? Not a lot, honestly. Um, you know, she's gonna apply corrosion to the enemies with three or less orbs on on their gauge. She's gonna decrease attack of enemies with five or more, and then uh, and their ultimate move gauge by ten percent for two turns. So attack uh, only lowering by ten for two turns is not that great. You know, uh, and this excludes death matches. Well, you cannot use her in any death matches. Um, her skills itself, she's kind of just you know uh, you know deplete ultimate move gauge on the AOE single target. It's the like heal card, kind of like. Uh, you know the uh, LR Liz card, but just single target. So honestly, not a really good character, and I think she's in the same boat as Camilla and Red Roxy, where I actually just don't have like really any use for this character. Really, like, what are we gonna be using this Lilia for? Not really anything in the game, really, guys. So yeah, definitely skip uh, to skip out on this Lilia desire as well. Alrighty guys, now moving on to this mono, the human weapon mono, the blue one. Now this mono could actually be a character you guys might want to get. And the main reason with that is because she is a really good PvE character. So right here, her passive states that cannot be used in PvP and is only in PvE related content. But what she's going to do is increase the hero's damage up by 30% for each orb in the enemy's ultimate move gauge. So she pretty much has built-in detonate in her passive. And then that alongside the fact that she has buff strip on her single target, which can definitely be pretty good and cancel stance. And then her AOE is just going to be, you know, preventing ultimate engage. Nothing super crazy with this. But I do think that this passive alone gives this mono a lot of longevity because when there's bosses that have a ton of, you know, detonate or a ton of like uh, ultimate move gauge, you're literally, you know, built in detonate on these skills. So it's like remove buffs from enemies and inflicts detonate damage equal to 20 or uh, 220% of attack, right? That's kind of how these skills act when using this mono. So yeah, I mean, overall, she's pretty good. I think she also was used back when Proof of Courage was released. So, you know, if you think about that and the long-term value of this character and what she could be doing in PvE related content, you know, maybe she is worth picking up. Um, I wouldn't say she's like, you know, super insane nowadays though, but you know, maybe in the future she'll be good again on, you know, another PvE related content guys. So that's going to be the human mo uh, weapon mono. I don't think she's a bad pickup, but I don't know if she's going to be the best either. All right, guys, now moving on, we do have the Valenti of Obsession, the Mark II Valenti, the first one. So this Mark II Valenti, honestly, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest, man. I, I think this character is in the same boat as the other Awakened Lilia, uh, the Camilla, and the Red Roxy. And the reason why is because I don't think this character is doing anything super special for your account that you would really need, right? Like, if we go over a passive, increase the hero's pierce rate and critical damage by half of the hero's critical resistance at the start of the battle. That's kind of cool. You know, uh, scaling off of critical resistance for your damage is definitely pretty cool. You know, in general, though, that's not really going to be doing too much for you uh, in the grand scheme of things, because when are you really going to be running critical resistance gear and doing, uh, like, using this character for anything, right? Um, for her skills, she's going to have block effect single target, which is definitely pretty nice, but her AoE is just going to be severed. So she's kind of like a, a, a damage dealer, but she's a very old damage dealer, right? So not going to really provide too much for your account nowadays. So I definitely would skip out on this character, unless you're like, you know, this is like one of the only characters you're missing, then you can definitely pick her up. But other than that, I don't think she's worth picking up. Alrighty guys, moving on to the Red Easton here, the Noblesse Easton. This one is, uh, I don't know, I think she's okay. Um, she definitely has value in the fact that she is a backline support. Decreases damage taken by allies with single target attacks by 6% for each ally that is of the 7 catastrophes, including the secondary slot hero. So she's able to get, what is that? Uh, 6, 12, 18, 24% in terms of the damage reduction from single target skills. And, you know, not a bad, you know, like backline in like Chaos Battle. You know, I mentioned earlier with Lilia that we don't really use like, you know, tanking backlines, but sometimes the, you know, this character will just be 500 points and this is a free backline for like a, you know, like a blue Roxy team, right? So yeah, I mean, there is that. Other than that though, she doesn't really got anything special. She got the buff card that, uh, you know, LR Liz originally had, I think. Um, but it's just a, like a kind of a worse one, right? You know, because it doesn't have the uh, defense buff on the rank one. And then our single target is just gauge reduction. So yeah, I mean, again, another character kind of in the same boat as like those other characters I mentioned that are not the great. Um, they don't really have a, a much of a niche, but she does have a backline support effect. So, you know, there is definitely that uh, uh, right there for this Easton. All right, guys, moving on to the green uh, human weapon mono. What is she going to be doing for the team? Not really too much. She's kind of just a green DPS character. If we look at her passive here, when all allies on the battlefield are of seven catastrophes, increases all sides of the hero by three percent each time an ally is damaged from a skill usage she's kind of just like a mikasa i guess you guys could say like a, a mikasa before the uh 
for the seven catastrophes team, right? Limited of 10 times in a plasma entry battle, and excludes deathmatch, and then resets when another hero exists. So, pretty much, it has to be only seven catastrophes. When are you really ever going to use that with a mono like this? Probably never, really. So, I don't really know. I mean, you definitely could use this character, though, in like Belmos. I've seen strategies on Belmos with this character, but she's just kind of like a, you know, a character you would use just because you like her, right? You're not actually going to use this character because she's like super meta or anything, but she's definitely an option on Belmos if you do want to run that. Um, she does have spike uh, single target right here, and it's a melee effect. And then she does have range, uh, or no, she has melee uh, sever as well, but it's an AoE skill, yeah. That's what it was. So she has double melee. So she definitely could be an option on Belmos. But that's pretty much it, guys. So not too much going on with this mono as well. Alrighty guys, now the final character we have here on the list is going to be the Eastern Authority, the Red Awakened one. Now this one's kind of the same as the other Red Eastern in terms of the backline supportive effect. She's going to decrease the amount of damage the allies take, um, the 7 Catastrophes allies specifically, by 3% for uh, every orb in the ultimate move gauge on the battlefield. So you get, what is that? That's, that's at least like 3 times... Uh, 30 right yeah so that's a lot actually wait no that's actually a lot of uh damage reduction you get up to 90 percent if everyone has their ultimate move gauge in pvp let's say because it's 3v3 setting you have 15 orbs on one side you have 15 orbs on the other is that realistic not really no uh, but you know can it you know happen like eventually when people start getting their damage reduction going sure um, You know, it's not like the super insane backline supportive effect But in chaos battle, it's another thing where like, you know Are people really gonna be using this character not not really right? So she could probably be like 500 600 points and you might want to actually use this character Other than that she does have an exclusive skill here the oxidize uh, effect Where she's gonna decrease skill ranks and inflict damage equal to 10% of max HP for every skill that had its rank decreased at the end of the enemy's turn she kind of has like a D rank alongside the D rank. She's going to deal damage based on the, you know, amount of skills that were D ranked, right? So if you go from, you know, rank three to rank one, it's going to do a lot, right? So there's that uh, pretty much with this Easton, but nothing super special with her. She mainly just has that and then that backland supportive effect. Alrighty, guys, now that we've gone over all the characters in this list, what are my main recommendations for you guys to be picking? Um, It's been a lot. We just talked over all these characters, just so many of them, right? So I had to kind of go over all of them, but I think the main ones you guys want to definitely be picking are going to be the green Valenti, the red uh, regular mono, the blue regular mono, or green Shin. I think these four are probably your best bets, just in general, just because if we think about it, right? Valenti has that use where, I, as I mentioned, she could do floor one of pretty much each demonic beast battle, other than Raditasra. I think that's really valuable. This mono is really good right now on Raditasra because she has bleed, um, because she has poison, right? Both, both those skills. So I mean, I flipped it, but uh, you guys get what I mean. Mono has both those skills. Shin is a really good farming unit, especially early on if you're like starting with a fresh account or you're kind of getting into the game. He's definitely a, a really good farming character. And then I think this mono has some use in the future, you know, because she was used on, on things like Proof of Courage and you know hard pve content back in the day i definitely do think that she could be used in the future and if this character was to get lr or something like that could be another really good option but i think my number one priority right now i'd say um if you don't own any of these characters is probably gonna be the mono yeah this one right here just because riotos is the new hardest thing in the game and being able to clear that with a character like this i think is very valuable um this valenti is very good too though you know again as i mentioned being 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 a being able to cheese the floor one of pretty much each demonic beast battle, I think, is very strong. So just that alone, I think, is worthwhile um, for this Valenti as well. But yeah, I mean, that's going to be uh, the selection ticket right there, guys, in terms of the characters. In my uh, in my account right here on my main account, as I mentioned, I'm going to be selecting the Roxy right there because I actually don't need any of the other characters, guys. Unfortunately, I have pretty much all these other characters, 6 out of 6, if I'm not mistaken. So I will actually be taking these Roxy dupes, and then uh, we'll finish out with that. So there we go, guys. That is going to be it for the video. I hope you guys did enjoy. Hopefully, this was helpful, and you guys learned which character you want to be picking for in this ticket. Remember, you are going to be getting two of these tickets in the event one from the actual special missions and then one from the other thing as well the uh, renovation event right so definitely take advantage of that and get this free character here guys and that's going to be it for the video i hope you guys did enjoy we'll see you guys on the next one man peace out and have a great rest of your day guys see you later man